Hello, I'm Kyung Tae Lee from Hamam Church in Chuncheon. Some time ago, I was diagnosed with acute myeloid leukemia, and I'm currently undergoing treatment. Although my body is ill, my heart has been healed. So I've come here without any fear of infection. I'd like to share how my life changed after accepting the risen Jesus in my heart as my Lord. Ever since I was very young, my mother ran a diner. Like any other work in the world, the restaurant business wasn't easy. My mother was the breadwinner of the family, and it was hard work for her. My father always liked his alcohol and friends, and he went through financial difficulties because he was often cheated by others of money. There was domestic violence as well. At the end of his life, he died of pancreatic cancer. But rather than being sad for his death, I didn't even shed a tear because I hated him so much for having made my mother's life so difficult. Due to my father, I developed an idea of someone whom I didn't ever want to become. An irres irresponsible, financially incompetent man. After serving in the army, I worked for one company all of my life, and I worked very hard. I wasn't very smart or talented, but like my mother, I was persistent and didn't give up till I finished my work. I spent my 20s and 30s very busily, working hard. I never even had any particular hobbies or leisure time. But I felt proud that I was playing a major role in my company's growth. I expected to have a happy family like other people. But happiness drifted away from us as I came home late from work, and my wife and I argued more and more. Work always came first for me. We've gone out to dinner only a handful of times during the past 11 years of our marriage. And to avoid fights with my wife, I used to tell her little lies. For instance, she didn't like that I smoked. So I lied and said that I had stopped smoking for her and hid my cigarettes in my mailbox, but I got caught. I thought the white lies were beneficial to avoid a fight, but I think they made her have a harder time. Because we didn't open up to each other, there was a constant misunderstanding, and that resulted in mistrust and hatred. I thought that my wife didn't understand whom I was working so hard for, so I grew mad at her. With an increasing amount of alcohol and offensive words, we really had many fights. As we fought, we got exhausted. So we pretended to understand each other, but in truth, we didn't care, and the wounds in our hearts remained. That's how the days went by. Then my son enrolled in elementary school, and my wife grew busy as well. One day, my son asked me a question. Dad, are we poor? No. Why? Who said that? At the time, we lived in a small apartment. The kids at my son's school had been talking about the size of their houses. My son must have thought we seemed poor. And there were kids who got ostracized as they talked about who was rich and who wasn't. But kids weren't the only ones who had these problems. I hated losing face, and I was quite obsessed with property and possessions. I thought that those things would make us happy, and I believed that the head of the household had to be financially competent and responsible. So we moved to a bigger house, but unlike what I expected, my son didn't want his own space. This led me to think that what he had actually wanted was his father's love and attention. Perhaps due to worrying about this and that, I grew tired and sick. But I thought this happened to anyone who worked hard, so I thought nothing of, the, nothing of it. Starting January of this year, I got really sick. First, I thought it was just a bad flu, so I went to see the doctor for a prescription. But the doctor told me I had a serious anemia and that I needed a blood test. Later, the test results revealed that I had acute myeloid leukemia. I was told that I needed an urgent treatment. I had to be admitted into a bigger facility immediately. I couldn't believe that I had a leukemia. It made no sense to me. I thought the world was caving in on me. It was so unfair, and I was so afraid to die. I came home and told my wife, and we cried together for a long time. Before I went to the hospital, I had to call my uncle, who was also my boss, because I couldn't work anymore. 
I choked back tears and barely told him that I had leukemia before I hung up the phone. My uncle came to visit me the next day at the emergency room. He was coming from Hamount Church. After receiving my call, he had asked its members to pray for me. As my wife and I sat consumed with fear, my uncle told me something that I really didn't expect. He said, All this time, you didn't believe in Jesus and lived as the Lord of your own life. You've lived as your own Lord in your heart. That's why you're here. I felt like I'd been struck in the head, and my heart burned as tears sprang to my eyes. I'd never experienced tears like that before. These weren't tears of sadness or fear. As I faced my own death through this illness, the words, You've lived as your own Lord, made me kneel before God. In truth, I had been mistrustful of the church, and after my uncle started being a Christian, I couldn't understand why he had changed. There was a time when my uncle had taken everyone in the company to the summer retreat at his church. It was during the busiest time of the year. I couldn't understand why we had to go. I didn't like the repetitive sermons about the resurrection, and it was hard to have fellowship with people I didn't know, so I practically fled from the church. That was how, how much I had disliked church, but at the words, not believing in Jesus and living as the Lord of your own life, I repented and received Jesus as my Lord. Amen. I loved the things of this world, so I hadn't believed in Jesus and had lived as my own Lord. What is visible is not everything, and I saw how foolish I had been chasing after the things of this world. As the prophecies in the scripture said, Christ came to this earth as a man, was crucified, buried, and raised after three days. These were facts I couldn't deny. I had been sinning all my life. Regardless of diligent life, I had been a sinner who didn't believe in Jesus and was the Lord of my own life. I repented once more and received Jesus as my Lord. Amen. The truth was, before receiving Jesus as my Lord, I had been a pitiful man who didn't even know what it meant to live as the Lord of my own life. My wife also repented with me and received Jesus as her Lord. And we stayed up till 1 or 2 a.m. talking about God. After meeting the Lord, it was a joy to worship with the church, and I loved having fellowship with its members. During my chemotherapy, there was a verse that I held on to. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Just like this verse, all fear was gone in my heart. A lady from church who had met the Lord while battling cancer came to visit me. She was completely healed now, and she told me about how she'd met the Lord. Her story was very similar to mine, and I opened up to her. And my wife and I were now able to talk to each other with joy and smiles on our faces. They say that chemotherapy is very tough, even for strong adults, but I received it with joy. I recovered faster than other patients, so I was discharged early. I came to consider my illness as a blessing because my whole family became children of God through my illness. A great amount of treatment still awaits me, but I am not afraid or worried. My heart's become heaven with its new Lord. After being discharged, I attended my small church worship. I was so grateful to the people who had prayed for me and was eager to meet them. So without any fear of infection, I attended the worship. I was so thankful for their warm welcome, and though I would met them for the first time, we had a great time of fellowship. And now I go to Hamam Church in Chuncheon, although it's not a short distance from my home. In the meantime, the evil spirits did not leave us alone. They put worries in our thoughts. Acute myeloid leukemia is not like other cancers. After chemotherapy, a bone marrow transplant is needed for a chance of complete cure. But since I don't have any siblings, I need a donor. After I registered in the bone marrow donor program, we found that 
that there was only one donor in the country with matching genes. A thorough genetic testing had to be done to make sure that the match was perfect, and there was no guarantee whether this person would donate her bone marrow or not. My wife started to cry when the doctor explained all this. The doctor had once said, it might even be possible to use my own bone marrow. So my wife and I were disappointed and worry came into our hearts. We had thought that everything would be okay, but with this surprising news, my wife couldn't focus on the word of God and became hopeless. After all the positive progress at outpatient care, we are now met with the fact that there was only one donor candidate. I think that news put my wife in total despair. I read a verse from the book of Acts to her. He has given proof of this to everyone by raising him from the dead. God gave us proof with which we can believe by raising Jesus from the dead. We couldn't doubt or be shaken. But she was again becoming the Lord of her heart, and she was holding on to my illness instead of the risen Jesus. So when worries came, the core of her heart was shaken. So I told my wife, It's okay. I'm not afraid of anything because I'm born again. I have a new life. I'm a person whose heart has been healed. I think your heart is holding on not to Jesus, but to my illness. Don't be frustrated because of my illness. Are you holding on to the resurrection of Jesus or my disease? I think that those words weren't my own, but the Holy Spirit's. My wife wept and repented, saying that she had lost her hold on Jesus in her heart and so had been shaken. Watching her repent, I also examined my own heart. What is the focus of my own heart? Wasn't it also shaken? Yes, it was. My heart had been holding on to the risen Jesus, but how did I end up focusing on my illness? I was so ashamed, and I knelt down to my Lord Jesus in repentance. My heart holds on to my risen Jesus. Amen. It is the anchor that can never be shaken, no matter what storms may come. Amen. On my way to church, I was listening to the Bible using a smartphone app, and I heard this passage. In John 9, it says, As we went along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Neither this man nor his parents sinned, said Jesus. But this happened so that the works of God might be displayed in him. Amen. When I told my mom about my illness, just as all other parents would, my mother had a very hard time. My mother also goes to church, and she was praying for me. But as a mother, she said she blamed God for taking away someone most precious to her. So I texted these verses in John to my mother, and she called me a little later, weeping. She said, You are saying that it is not my fault, right? Yes, I believe you will be used for the work of God. And she cried. I knew the meaning of her tears. I think there is nothing like the scriptures. It is stronger than a thousand comforting words. Amen. There is a power in the scriptures, absolute power. I used to think, why am I so unfortunate? Why did it have to be me? At the time, I felt great agony, resentfulness, and much bitterness. But if I hadn't had leukemia, I'd still be sinning in, the, in this world. And if I was healed without receiving Jesus, I would still be immersed in the world and living as my own Lord. Rather than being hopeful about being healed, 
I'm grateful that my body can be used for God's work. It is no longer important whether I'm cured or not. It is more important that I have received Jesus as my Lord, that my heart has been healed, and that I have become someone who spreads the gospel. People look at me with wonder because they don't see any worries on my face, although I have leukemia. Then I tell them that it is because I have met Jesus. I can talk about the gospel in a simple way, and my leukemia has become a means to share the gospel. The twelve disciples must have known well that they would get killed if they talked about the risen Jesus. But rather than being afraid of death, they chose to speak about the risen Jesus, the greatest news of all, till they happily met the end of their lives. This was not something that they were forced to do. Their martyrdom became history because of the certainty of Jesus' resurrection. I also want to live a life of spreading the gospel. I want to let people know how foolish and vain it is to live as the Lord of your life in this world. I'm happier than any person who may have everything he wants in this dark world. My heart holds on to the risen Jesus. Thank you.